Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty powerful low profile single slot GPU that I recently put together. This is the world's first single slot low profile ARC A380 card and I'm really impressed by the performance uh, when it comes to the form factor here. And this is perfect for those really small gaming PC builds. Something similar to like the Minisform MS01 which has a really thin form factor but a full size PCIe slot inside. Recently, we got some new ARC GPUs from a company known as Sparkle, the A310. Now this comes in with four gigs of VRAM. It's actually a pretty good little card, but it's very low power. They also released their low profile dual slot ARC A380, which is one of my favorite cheaper cards on the market right now, especially when it comes to these small form factor builds. And retail on this is around 119, but I have seen it come in at around hundred bucks. In this video, I'll show you exactly what I did to make this a single slot low profile A380. But before we jump into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, nobody makes an aftermarket low profile single slot cooler for this A380. So what I had to do here was pull the low profile single slot cooler from the A310 and slap it right on that A380. It actually fits on here perfectly and we can go vice versa. So what I did was actually sell the A310 with the larger cooler to one of my buddies for 60 bucks, gave him a nice little discount. And if I was to buy, let's say an aftermarket cooler, if somebody created it for this, I'd spend around 80 to 100 bucks for that anyway. So the way I see it is I'm actually coming out a bit cheaper, but again, nobody makes an aftermarket cooler for this A380. So I had to go this route and with that A310 cooler, it just doesn't hit the VRM on the A380's board. So I had to add an aftermarket heat sink, which definitely does the job. Now this will boost up to around 43 watts and you can actually get more out of it. With this low profile cooler, I've been able to go up stably to around 52 watts with higher clocks and get some really great performance. Now this definitely isn't going to be for everybody and it'd be really nice if an aftermarket company came up with a solution for this. Some type of copper heatsink that would fit this low profile A380. And one of the big reasons I wanted to get this to a single slot form factor was for these smaller PCs hitting the market from companies like Menace Forum. Like the MS-01. So I personally love this little PC here. It's got a full size PCIe 5.0 slot inside, but unfortunately, you know, you can only go with a single slot low profile card. And now with the single slot cooler on that A380, fits in here perfectly. Now, when they originally showed off the MS-01 on their YouTube channel, I'm talking about Menace Forum, they showed off a low profile RTX A2000. Now that did have a custom low profile single slot cooler because that's all we can fit in here. And as soon as I can get my hands on one, I will be putting an RTX A2000 in here. It'll make a world of difference. But for now, this is about the most powerful single slot low profile card that I can get to fit in this unit. Alright, so here it is. As you can see, we've got the i9-13900H and this MS-01 from Menace Forum. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5200 megatransfers per second. And of course, we've got that ARC A380 with that low profile single slot cooler. Again, does come low profile, but it's a dual slot setup. With this cooler, we can fit it perfectly inside of the MS-01. And we got 6 gigs of VRAM with this unit. Out of the box, this Sparkle A380 actually performs pretty well, and from ARC control panel, we can go to performance, tuning, and from here, we can go all the way up to 43 watts. We've also got a GPU performance boost and a GPU voltage offset. So I do like doing a little bit of tweaking, but since we've got this smaller cooler on it, I don't know how far we can go over 43 watts, but I have found kind of a hack for these cards. 
Basically, even though we're running this at 43 watts, we can clock a lot higher than the stock clocks from Sparkle. And in order to enable this, what I've been using is the Predator Bifrost software. We can actually trick this card into thinking we can go up a bit higher here. So maximum clock with this A380 low profile is 1936 megahertz. Okay, I mean, it does perform pretty well. But if I trick this into thinking that we're in kind of turbo mode with a different card, we can boost up a bit higher. Now we're not gonna be doing 235 watts with this. So I've created a custom profile, just up to 54 watts. We've got our temperature set at 90 degrees Celsius. That's kind of the maximum we're gonna go before it starts underclocking itself. And now if I run Furmark, just go ahead and get this going. You can see that our GPU clock does boost up a bit higher and we're sitting around 52 watts on that TGP. GPU temp does climb up there, but I haven't hit over 82 degrees Celsius with this card yet. And of course it is a low profile in this small form factor case, not too bad. And right now this is more of an extreme test, but yeah, we can get those higher clocks on this A380 by using the Bifrost software. And this does come in handy, but uh, you know, if you wanted to keep it at the stock clocks, you definitely could. And now what I wanted to do was move over to some benchmarks to show you how this thing performs. First up, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid, and I've really never been impressed with the A380's uh, scores we get out of here. Coming in at 28,966, definitely not gonna win any awards here, but moving over to Fire Strike does jump up a bit to 9,694. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 4,485. When you compare this to other single slot low profile cards on the market that are affordable, this is definitely coming out ahead, even the RX 6400, which was the original card I wanted for this little unit here. Unfortunately, it just doesn't perform like I wanted it to. But with all of these new Intel Arc drivers, we're seeing some pretty decent performance out of the A380. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to see how this thing handles real world gaming. And the first one we have here is Helldivers 2 1080p Low with XESS set to balanced. This is one of those games I would suggest going down to 900p. You can do medium settings with no XESS. But even at 1080 low settings, it's definitely a playable experience on this little PC. We're seeing averages of around 81 FPS. Next up, Power World 1080p Low Medium Mix had to go through, kind of adjust everything, and we're seeing an average of around 64. Now, at the time of making this video, Power World doesn't have XESS built in from the factory. You will have to mod it. Even FSR would have helped out with this, but unfortunately, you know, stock, we only have access to DLSS. Moving over to Mortal Kombat 1, 1080p, medium, XESS set to balanced. Seeing some decent performance here with fighting games. I've been able to run Street Fighter 6, obviously Mortal Kombat 1, and even Tekken 8 at full speed, medium settings. Borderlands 3, 1080p, medium settings. Uh, this little art card does perform quite well with this game. I know it's a bit older, but it's still a lot of fun to play. We got an average of around 84 FPS with this at 100% resolution scale, medium settings. So yeah, I mean, this is another one that's going to be fully playable on a little card like this. And if you take a look at the temps, we're only up to around 72 degrees Celsius on that GPU. Would be nice to see lower temps, but we're not thermal throttling this thing at all. Fortnite, 1080p, medium settings. Uh, I don't play this, so I'm not exactly sure really what to test here, but uh, on average, we're seeing around 86 FPS. I kind of suspected we'd see some decent performance out of this game here. Of course, I had to throw in Forza Horizon 5, one of my go-to tests. We're at 1080p, high, no resolution scale, so we didn't need to enable XESS. And, you know, if you wanted to go up with the resolution, you could probably hit 1440p with this card, adding some XESS. But then it's kind of null because I'd say 1080, high settings, does look really great like it is. God of War, 1080p, original settings. This actually performed much better than I thought it would on this art card, but recently we did get an update from Intel. Newer drivers here did increase performance across the board with these Arc GPUs and God of War. And the final game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. This is one that's always struggled on these art cards, even the higher end cards. It's gotten a lot better over the last few months, and right now we are at 1080p medium settings with XESS set to performance. 
If you don't mind going down the low settings, you can get an average of around 89 FPS with it like this, or go down the low and take that scaling up to balance, which will clean it up a bit. Either way, it's still a playable experience on this low profile A380 with that single slot cooler installed. And again, highest temps that I saw was 76 degrees Celsius out of this card through all of my testing. So yeah, for these smaller form factor thin belts like the MS-01, adding something like this really does help out with GPU performance, but it's not for everybody because of course we don't have an aftermarket cooler that's easily accessible. Now one thing that I did was take the A310, swap the coolers between the two, and then sold my A310 for 60 bucks. I'm not exactly sure how well something like that would sell over on eBay, but there might be a market for it, and if you've got a buddy who needs a lower profile card with not as much power as that A380, then this could be a good option for you. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll also leave some links to where you can pick these up. Unfortunately, you will have to buy both cards up front to get this working, but you know, for some people, they might want to go ahead and do something like this. If you want to see anything else tested with this card, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.